In the Bible, Paul explains that everyone has two bodies, a physical body and a spiritual body. Mediums use their spiritual bodies when they act as a communication bridge between the physical and spirit worlds. As a spirit speaks, mediums hear the information using the ears of their spiritual bodies, then repeat the information to other physical people. Mediumship is synonymous with the biblical term, gifts of the spirit. The focus of our show, Making Known the Unknown, is to provide knowledge through the use of Reverend Hewitt's mediumship and Sidney Schwartz's research. The Bible contains the history of psychic events, along with man-made doctrines created by priests centuries ago. This show will explore the untruths which the Bible entrenched into our society. By uncovering these untruths, we encourage people everywhere to think for themselves with a critical mind. And welcome to Making Known the Unknown. I'm your host, Tina Tarek, and with me tonight is Reverend Carl Hewitt. Carl is founder and pastor of Gifts of the Spirit Church in Chesterfield, Connecticut, as well as Medium. Welcome, Carl. Thank you. And also to our viewers, if you're used to there being a third person here, you're not imagining it. Sydney's not with us tonight. He's on sabbatical, but will soon return in some of our upcoming shows. Right. But we can feel uh, his presence missed tonight, most definitely. Right. Uh, the topic of tonight's show is really sort of a general topic, and it's called Chatting with Carl. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to have... Uh, a real stringent uh, uh, guide or theme. We're going to just kind of bring up some topics and let it flow and see what uh, you can learn about uh, Carl Hewitt. And one of the first things that we want to talk about, and it's been brought to my attention, and some of you viewers may have seen this this past week uh, on TV or read it in the news, um, and it was brought to my attention, is an article about uh, a mother in uh, Massachusetts who evidently allowed her infant um, son to starve to death. And when I read this article, like many, many people, I was a couple of things. I was very sad and I was very shocked. Um, and then at the end, uh, it made me a little bit angry. And then it led me to thinking about why we do the show that we do. And the basis for this story, and then I will turn it over to Carl, is that the parents essentially were um, brainwashed, for lack of a better word, to believe in rejecting all forms of medicine for their children. And then, um, as you can see, it, it got a little out of control. And with that, I wanted to ask Carl what he thought about that situation. Well, as I've been saying for such a long time, trying to get people to open their mind and think for themselves rather than let others that's into mind control uh, get them thinking in another way. Because this, this woman, this, this woman and her husband evidently have been listening to something that was created from some prophecy that was written in that book, and that book was written by man. I don't care what anyone says. Because I've been in touch with those in the higher dimensions all my life, and I stake on what I'm saying. So do you think that they had probably been reading some version of the Bible or some Bible? No, I, I look at it the other way. Hmm. Uh, evidently, the person standing up there on the front talking to them, be it a, a minister, preacher, uh, rabbi, whoever, was interpreting, misinterpreting what was in the book. And uh, it got them thinking that they're doing something, they're do, perhaps doing God a favor. Can you imagine anybody that's that ignorant that they're gonna do God a favor? I cannot believe that there's people out there that, that uh, is that ignorant. I guess that the baby had um, starved for 51 days, it says in this article. And it was just shy of a year old. It's, it's three uh, days, birthday. three days short of its first mm. birthday. That's really amazing. Um, 
And this is a sect of a particular religion, I guess, yes. that resides in, uh, yes. it says, Adel uh, Attleboro, Massachusetts. Yes. And uh, I guess one of the bigger questions that that brings up is how people would know once they get involved in this, and does it attract a certain type of person, perhaps, where other people outside looking in would say, they're crazy, and I would never go for that. What, what's your thought on the kind of people you think that, that would get involved in this? Well, there's a lot of people out there that can be led very, uh, very easily by a person of the clergy. With me, I'm trying to get people to think for themselves, because mm -hmm. as, the, the, as the great teacher, my brother, who's in this picture and the one behind me here, mm -hmm. As he first told me, he said, that when, he said, when the time comes that you address a new house of people, uh, the thing I want you to say to them, remind them that they have a brain and remind them that they have a mind and remind them to start using it as of that day or that night, whenever the meeting takes place. And so I don't go in there saying that you got to do this or you got to do that or the other. Mm. I just uh, simply remind the people that they have a brain. Use it. Mm. There's too many people that get carried away by some idiot that stands up in front of them and is ranting and raving uh, about something that's in the book. And of course, he's, he or she uh, is misinterpreting it. They're, they're doing... They're pre presenting it in the minds of those people in their own words, their own thoughts. My God, I, where I came from as a little boy, there was a prison not too far from uh, where, I, uh, where we lived. And these people that were let out of prison, they would go to the nearest farm and ask to tell the people they found God in, in, in the prison. My question, what's he doing in prison? And so they say, I would be happier if I had a Bible, but I don't have one. So these poor, f ignorant families, they take their own Bible and give to this guy, and he takes it, and he goes hitchhiking somewhere or other, stops in a farm community, tells everybody that he found God and he wants to preach about it. Here's a guy that never preached or anything, never mm. talked to people, mm. but he takes his book up there only to get them to collect some money so he put it in his pocket and he go into another place. Mm. I mean, to me, it's absolute ignorance. I was born in a Baptist family, and uh, because of being gifted, and I didn't know what it was all about, mm -hmm. and uh, everything, and so my mother was, wasn't, they wouldn't even let her in the church after oh. they found out that I was that I was born with these gifts because oh. they said it was the work of the devil and they wouldn't let her in the church. How horrible for your family. A horrible experience. My father was an assistant pastor of the church and he left the church too. And uh, it's, it's been a horrible experience for me. I mean, I don't envy any child out there that's born uh, to fanatics because right away they're going to accuse the child of being possessed by the devil, and there is no such thing as the devil. Well, I guess this woman claimed that uh, <clears throat> she was told not to give her son solid food and to continue to breastfeed him. And, and something or someone told her this. Do you think she was listening to spirit? No. Where do you think that came from? Well, it was probably, it was mentioned to her by somebody of the clergy, I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure of that. Wow. And she just took that, and as coming from God Almighty, wherever he was, right. you know? That's scary. That's really scary. You know, I have a book here in my hand that I, I was told to bring. Spirit, mm -hmm. the voices told me to bring this book okay. with me. And the name of this book is The Voice of Ignorance. And they've explained to me that the world has been living in ignorance for thousands and thousands of years, simply because of all of the different religions. And that when people, people of this world, understand mediumship, and they understand there's other dimensions that we go to when we die, not hell, there's no such place. Mm -hmm. 
and we continue living in another dimension. Whatever we achieved here, such as you a teacher, you go where the teachers go, musicians go where musicians go, and artists where artists go. And when people understand the working of spirit and how they communicate with us through mediumship, not fake fortune tellers and not psychics, everyone is psychic. The word psychic means soul and mind. And so this man here, uh, Arthur Finley, mm -hmm. came from a very wealthy family in London, and he became interested because in the neighborhood, not too far from where he lived, was a very famous medium. And he couldn't understand, even as a kid, why people would go to seek advice from this woman because she had no education, none. And uh, when he was about 15, he decided to go himself. Well, she didn't know who he was. She gave him a reading, and the things that she told him and everything else just blew his mind. And he became very interested in the working of spirit. The bridge, shall we say, the medium itself is like a bridge between the two dimensions. And uh, he, st he, uh, set, he set his life on a pattern of learning all that could be learned. And he wrote the book, uh, The Curse of Ignorance. Spirit told me not too long ago that the world that we live in today, the ignorance runs rampant. Mm -hmm. And when the time comes that all the people of this planet understand the truth, then the world, uh, the uh, world of, or the kingdom of man mm -hmm. will become the kingdom of God, right here on the planet. I can't even begin to tell you the things that happened, but I would like to share something with you, if you don't mind. Okay. I think I, this was told on other shows, but I want to go back. When I was a small child, very small, I remember what my father said, because I was, I was always trying to help my father. <clears throat> I had a whole bunch, of, I have seven brothers, and all of them were lazy. Really? And I mean that. They wouldn't help my father. <laughs> They hated the farm. And uh, I would go out there with a hoe and help my father's, and he would teach me what he was doing all. And I didn't realize that what was going on, but I was communicating with others in another dimension. At the same time, I was communicating with him. Mm -hmm. And I remember what he said. He said, son, I don't know of anybody that communicated with heaven and earth at the same time. Jesus was the only one that I could recall that was able to do that. And he said, some of the things that you keep saying to me would sound as if you're talking to someone in, a, uh, in heaven, right. uh, and also you're talking to me here on earth. And he says, this is puzzling, puzzling me. How old were you when this happened, roughly? Five or six, oh something like that. Okay. And... Uh, then when, uh, yeah, it was five or six. I hadn't gone to school yet, but when I went to school, mm -hmm. as some of the people out there know, that the, um, I was taken over, went into trance, went up on the stage, and, uh, and lectured to the whole auditorium full of high school students. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, my downfall. I didn't know what trance was. I did not know that... Mm -hmm you go into a state that you're, it's like you're asleep. And then when I came off of that stage, the first step off the stage, I came out of the trance state. There was my teacher, uh, Miss, uh, <coughs> Miss Gallagher, and all of the high school uh, teachers were all huddled in one group, knowing that I have to come off this particular steps uh -huh. to get you're off the stage. Yeah. And so I came out of that trance the minute I touched, I touched that first step, and there was all these faces of high school kids looking at me. I'm only six years old. And it was the most horrible experience I've ever had in my life because they were throwing one question after another at me. Where did you find, learn such big words? And, mm -hmm. and uh, was your father a preacher? And did, when did you live on the, on the shores of the Tigris and the Euphrates? At six years old, I didn't even know anything about these places. I didn't know what they were talking about. And, of course, you're also in the South, yeah. in the middle of the Bible Belt. Right. And 
a pretty hot spot to really be going spot. into a trance. That's right. And then four or five days after that, the county nurse came to, to get me and did not, wouldn't tell me where she was going. She was taking me. She took me in her car and drove to Wilmington, which was 35 miles away, and had my eyes tested and my ears tested, mm. and they didn't find anything wrong with me. Mm. Well, that wasn't good enough for all those preachers around there. So a few more days went by, and she came back again, and this time there was another car with four men in it. Took me years to find out the true story about it. They were preachers in the area, and they were insisting that she take me to uh, Duke University, the medical school, mm -hmm. to have my eyes and ears tested, right. because they had, they were determined to have me, uh, the doctors, do a lobotomy on me. I didn't even know what that was. Right. And uh, so they could put me in an insane asylum. And they had my father convinced that I was born mm -hmm. with the devil in me. They even taught the neighbors and the kids and everything else how to uh, frighten me. And, you know, it was like scaring the hell out of him mm -hmm. or scaring the devil out of him, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I went yeah. through all this garbage. And when my friend uh, Dixie, she was the only person that I knew in that, at that time that had these gifts too, and we were both the same age. We didn't live, we lived about 10 miles apart. But uh, she, uh, she was being harassed by the people and the church, because her the Baptist church was right next door to where she lived. And they wouldn't even let her, they wouldn't even let that little girl sit on the steps. She was really? possessed by the devil. That's a shame. So she took her father's shotgun at 15 and she killed herself. You know, it seems to me all it could have taken was one person, yeah. one person and all these communities and all these families that had a little bit of knowledge yeah, about what was knowledge. really going on. A little bit of knowledge. And you know why? <laughs> What's wrong is this. All of the work that I do and I've studied mediumship is all the way through the Bible. Hmm. Because when you read the Bible, you open it and it says, and the voice of the Lord came to me and he said this, this, and this. That particular person that is hearing the voice and addressing the entity as the Lord, that was only out of respect for the right. person who's talking to them. That's right. all that was. Right. But most of the people are so ignorant, they think that's Jesus or somebody else is speaking to them. You know, they can't put it all together, you see. I want people to wake up because the world is in a mess. And before the end of the show tonight, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to reveal something here on the air that uh, some people's not going to like because uh, it's not gloom and doom, mm. but it's something that I've been seeing in the last uh, 82 hours. Okay. I've done some uh, remote viewing and I don't like what I'm seeing. And it's dealing with our country. Mm. And the people can ignore this if they want to. Go for it. We will, we will talk about it at the end. I promise to bring that up. Yes. I'm sure we will have time. Um, I am sure that not many people perhaps were as lucky as you were with what didn't happen to you as a result of yeah. them seeing this gift come through. Of course, we know it's a gift, but there, I'm sure there they didn't think about it that way. I bet you many, many people um, ended up having lobotomies or being put away or being told they're mentally ill. That's why there were so many insane asylums in mm. this country. Mm. In you this so-called Christian were? country, yeah. this is why there were so many of those places where peace people were put away. I told you the story about the one down here in uh, Norwich. Yes, you told State me that. State Hospital. Right, right. That was a sad one, a very sad experience for me. How, would you say a good percentage of the people that were in these places were probably just misunderstood? Yes. Because Many of them were gifted. Because of this religious ignorance that's going I walked everywhere. in, I went into Norway State Hospital, uh, oh, this is back in the 60s, and there was um, a young man in there, and he came over to talk to me. I don't, I don't think he was 20 years old. He came over and talked to me, and he said that, um, he said, you have a beautiful light around you. Well, here's a person who had second sight. He could see the light mm -hmm. around me. 
This goes back uh, to people who have second sight is able to see the light. as a light around your body. That light comes from your soul. Mm. It's the lowest frequency of light on the planet. This is why Jesus said he was the light of the world. And you see, I was in such denial because of my upbringing as a child and everything. I was in such denial. And when that message, it's on that, on that canvas, right? And it says, you'll be the guiding star of his existence in the near future. And this has come true to the letter. This happened in 82. And then when he appeared in this picture in 1999 and in this picture in 2000. And he's, they've been pushing, I say they because there's more than just he over there. Uh, pushing me to go to this place in North Carolina, and I've just came. Ba I just came back last night, mm. and uh, this is why I wanted to come and talk about this. So, uh, one of the questions that I had is, you know, you were five or six, and you were having these experiences um, and going into trance, uh, and I'm sure that that only increased as you were getting older. When did you actually have your first? experience when and where as far as mediumship actually, knowing that that's what it is actually i was i had i had left home to get away from all of that i i, I was trying to keep anybody from knowing this about me mm -hmm. and so i uh, hitchhiked to um, no i didn't hitchhike I, I went to florida with a uh, friend of the families and uh we went down. She was going to visit a, a sister, I believe it was, in Florida. And we went down and, uh, see, I had quit school. I'm trying to get some answers. And so I, I got a job with this family that was up here in Connecticut. And when they sell their business in Florida, they wanted me to come up here and work for them here because they also had a business up here. You were how old when you were thinking about doing this? 18, 17. Okay. All right. And so I came up and I remember making friends with this one couple that had no car. They had two children, but they didn't have a car, but I had an old jalopy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we bummed around together. We really had a good, uh, good friendship, good relationship. One day he called me from work. He worked at the American Thread in Willimantic. He called me mm -hmm. and he said, what are you doing uh, tonight? And I said, I have no plans. He says, well, why don't you come? I thought he said, come and pick us up and take us to this meeting. And uh, I said, what time is it? He said, 7 o'clock. And so I said, well, I'll pick you people up at uh, 7 o'clock. And he said, um, well, I won't be going. And I says, how, how come you're not going? And he says, well, I'm Catholic. And he says, I can't go to another church. And I said, well, if you're Catholic, isn't your wife Catholic? Because we never talk religion. Oh, okay. Right. And uh, he says, oh, she don't give a damn. Exactly what he said. She don't give a damn. So anyway, I picked her up at, uh, I think it was 10 minutes after 7. She was a little upset because I was a little bit late. She said, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to find a seat in that place. And you were already living here in Connecticut at yeah, the time. Yeah, okay. I was living in Connecticut. Okay. And so I, uh, I picked her up and we went to this place. I said, where are we going? Where is this place? And she says, well, I can show you. And we went to this church and the place was so packed. It was so packed that there was no seats available. People were standing around the walls. Okay. And uh, I didn't know what this was all about. Here I'm looking for some signs on the wall to say what kind of a church it right, is, but right. I couldn't find anything. Okay. And then they introduced this young woman and she looked to be about probably 27, 30, something like that. And she came out, and when she went into trance, I see I'd never seen anybody go right. into trance, but she came out okay. there, closed her eyes, I thought she was going to pray, and then a, a vo another voice came out. It was a, the, the lecture was absolutely beautiful, and the more she talked, or the more I heard this voice, mm -hmm. the higher I got. I thought after a while I'd wind up on the ceiling because I'd never heard any of this from another physical being. And see? I'm sure this place was packed because was they knew this packed. person was going to be there. It was packed okay. because she was very famous. She lived down in New Jersey. Okay. And um, 
So at the end of the lecture, I was hoping she'd keep going, and they told me later she, she spoke about 40 minutes. I thought it was five minutes. So um, then when she sat back down and they did something else, they had some songs or some what I call foolishness because nothing was nothing could compare what was already happening to me. Right. I wanted more. W were the people that were with you telling you what was going on or? The spirit people were telling me. Ah, but the people who brought you there, were they giving they you any signs? They didn't know. They went there to get their fortune told. Oh. Oh, that's what they were there for. Okay. And so a lot of the rest of them, you know, okay. they said okay. she tells you your fortune. All right. Give me a break. And so uh, then the lady came back on the stage and uh, <clears throat> the answer said that if your name is called out, uh, you must you must answer spirit, otherwise they'll leave you, go to somebody else. Okay. Well, there was somebody way over there that was, their names are called out and they were responding, you know, taking all the messages, and then somebody over here, and then a third one. And then the medium, she put her hand up like this, like this, dropped it down like this, and the voice, don't forget her eyes are closed and she's in trance. Okay. And the voice said, if my medium opened her eyes, she would not be able to see the young man in the back of the room that we need to talk to. Oh. Now, there was, uh, the person in front of me was heavy set, and I was very skinny, <laughs> very skinny. And uh, this woman right there, she turned around, she says, young man, you're gonna have to speak up, otherwise spirit will uh, leave you. Instantly, I was scared to death. I was scared to death. Don't ask me what. I was just scared. Right. Because After them speaking to you all these years, now yeah, she's saying I, they're speaking I'm to you. I'm not used to these all these people there, you <laughs> right, know what I mean? Because right. I got away from people. Okay. And so all of a sudden, this fear left. I went like this, and I said, you want to talk to me? And the voice said, yes. Thank you. You're welcome here. We're glad you're here. We have lots to tell you. Wow. Everybody now is staring at me. Okay. And... She told me where I came from, where I was born, where I was raised, all the stuff that happened to me, you know, from the time mm. I was very small, voices and everything else. And it seems that all the ones were talking to me when I was a kid was up there talking to her, the medium, in, in turn talking to me. From, because there were some similar messages? Oh, yes. The way they some spoke? of the things that were repeated to oh, me, really? you see? Oh, really? Okay, all right. But then she brought me right up to that phone call from my friend's husband. Okay. Even to the point where the, the, uh, he said, she don't give a damn. <laughs> Everybody was roaring, <laughs> laughing about that. And then, then mm -hmm. the medium stopped and then started again from that moment all the way through my life that the day would come that I would be ordained, that uh, there would be books are written about me, articles in papers, be on radio, television, and I would travel the world over. Well. <laughs> I thought that this woman is crazy, because I, I right. mean, right. none of this could ever happen to sure, me. Sure, you're 18 years old, 17, 18? 17. And this is being told 18, to you? Something in there. Okay. Every bit of this has happened mm. to me. Every bit, every bit of it has happened to me. And uh, all of this time, uh, all of this time, I uh, I just felt that anybody as highly evolved as Jesus himself yeah. would not bother with anybody like me. Understood. And all of this until this, the voice told me, I guess it was about 12, 15 years ago, that the time will come, I will show you, I will prove to you who I am. Mm. And in the meantime, I would ask, he says, it's not important. Mm. You want to talk about some of the proofs? really quickly because they're in this studio right where we're sitting. Well, the first, the, fir the, first, the message that came through mm -hmm. was this message right down here. Okay. I don't know where the camera's picking that up or not. I don't know if we can get a close up on that, but that this it, was painted for you by someone, right? Yes, that's okay. been painted. It was, right. a, it was a message in a little small piece of paper okay. at a uh, seance that we went to, and it said, you will be the guiding star of his existence in the near future. Right. Well, there's a man up in New Hampshire that took that, and he painted it. He's an artist, and he right. painted it, and he, he presented this to me. Right. And in the meantime, 
uh, I was getting messages from that day. I was mm -hmm. getting messages, directions, right. what to do, and everything else. Okay. So this kind of started the ball rolling. Yes, it started so, the so ball rolling. So to speak. Rolling. Okay. All right. This is what Thank I call you. heavy furniture okay. here. Okay. This it. is heavy stuff. <laughs> and so in 1998, I was told to go and sit in the presence of a medium mm -hmm. that would be in the state of uh, Indiana. Okay. And so I went out there and uh, I sat in the presence of this medium and this picture came through, this one here. Okay. And if the people watching you don't understand this, it's called precipitated art. In the American, I believe it's the American uh, Encyclopedia, no, American Dictionary, you look up precipitation and at the very bottom it is says, uh, as, as used in spiritualism. Isn't that the something? It's right in the dictionary. used in spiritualism. Right. Not a religious dictionary, in a regular dictionary. A regular dictionary. Okay. This goes to prove that somewhere way back, way back, mm -hmm. this also happened as one of the gifts with other gifted people, you okay. see? Mm -hmm. And so this happened in 1999, this one here that I'm proud of. And, that, and the, in that picture, that is... That, Jesus. That's Jesus, and that's Judas, Judas. kissing him on the cheek. And the young man yeah. that you see is the artist in the world of spirit okay. that did, did the painting. Okay. And the painting was done inside of a little box, which was dark inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were crayons in there. There were three by five cards in there. Okay. And uh, of course, your name is written on the card on right. one side. Other names are written on the card. Right. And then you flip it over, and there's the picture. You see? Okay. Same thing happened here. Right. This picture is really something. Now, if you want to, do you want to lift if, that up? If we could, if I don't know if the camera can. Oh, that's that shows it really well. If you just turn it. I don't know it, if the camera can come in it, here now. Turn it this way. But this is the actual picture on the back side of okay. the card, and uh, here, um, my name is written right here. That's how the medium would know who this belongs to. This name right here written in red and always larger than anybody else can uh, write, uh, Reverend Bingham. Right. He was a dear friend up. of mine in Massachusetts. I handled his funeral. Okay. And uh, there is a... Uh, I see Lone Eagle. Lone Eagle. Lone Eagle is the Indian that's always with me. Okay. And uh, Bill English was the great medium that I first met in Indiana. Okay. He passed in 1992. Hmm. Yeah, 1992. And um, Dr. Dr. Holman. Holman, okay. Yeah, he's, he's a doctor of divinity. All right. And um, Rabbi somebody. Rabbi Bear. Okay. From Boston. Huh. He argued with me till he was blue <laughs> in the face that there's no such thing as communicating. I says, well, then, then what do you think? He couldn't give me no answers to that. <laughs> and, uh, oops. I get it. So I don't have to have any more proof. It's just that I want to get people to think for themselves, because if you think for yourselves, people, then you'll go beyond a lot of the garbage that's handed to you from the church. I hate to say it, but it is the truth. Because they have told me, and I'm not talking about people out here, this is not gossip, I'm talking about people from the higher dimensions. They have told me that the churches on this planet, the religions are nothing but franchises. There's always a headquarters, and they franchise all these churches out, and of course everyone has to send money to the headquarters, mm -hmm. and that the religion on this planet is the biggest business on the planet. And if it wasn't for religion, there would not be any holy wars. And what's happening over there right now in Iraq, it's only because of the religion. They're being brainwashed, saying that when they, uh, if they kill themselves and take five Americans with them, they'll be rewarded by God, given the, these men 72 virgins. Well, <laughs> it's too bad they don't realize that when you go into the world of spirit, you don't have any sex organs. <laughs> so that's not going to work out very, very well for these people committing suicide. Right. But of course, how that becomes translated in this country, it seems, is their religion or culture versus ours. That's right. Again, we just throw up a wall because we don't like what we're seeing, rather than looking at the fact that in this country, 
I mean, just that, that very simple article I started out with is an example of something very extreme and very scary and sad. The way I look at it, as I, I'm getting back to this book, The mm. Curse of Ignorance, mm. the way I look at it, if the theologians were not so damn greedy mm. and wanted to make, keep the people in ignorance so that they could uh, get all the money out of them, the world would be in a better condition today than it ever was before because this man who wrote the book, he went out and researched and he didn't mess around with just psychics, mm. fortune tellers. He went and he found the gifted people. This is why this book. And uh, if the whole, if religion, religion now, because I have said in seances where there were people high up in the Catholic Church that wouldn't even give their names because I was afraid of it getting back to wherever they were stationed. And, uh, but they're there, and many of them know the story, but they won't mention it. And if, uh, if somebody would go, and I've, ha I've, I've known people that did this, they would go to, say, a priest or a minister, mm -hmm. um, mostly the priest, and they'd say, can you help us out? Can you explain this, you know? And there's two answers that that man will give these people, two answers. One would be, it is, it is something we haven't studied enough in order to give you an answer. Right. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's the work of the devil. Right. Most of the time they push that devil business. You see. You know what that makes me think of? It makes me think of a story, for some reason or other, also I think from Massachusetts, we're not picking on Massachusetts by any means, um, <clears throat> about a young girl, I believe she was quadriplegic, she was ridden, bedridden, had to be feed, fed through feeding tubes, mm -hmm. but when people would be in her presence, they would be healed. I don't know if you remember this, but I, I believe the Catholic Church was asked to give their opinion on this matter, and it made me think of that because one of the things they had said was that they needed to study it. They needed to back up and take a look at what was really going on here. And for some reason or other, it seemed like it just faded in the news, and we never really heard about it again. Do you remember that? I remember it very well, but let me come in on this uh, in a little bit of a different way. Mm. The biggest, the greatest library in the world is in the Vatican and they've got every conceivable kind of book you can imagine on the work that I do. Really? Yes. But you know I'd like to go back and tell this. Somebody called me this week and they would like to hear the story again because they think they heard it way way back on the radio or something. Okay. And this is dealing with um, after this experience at the church in Willimantic you know, right. when I went and the medium told me all these things. Right, right. I became so interested in the subject because I didn't know what to ask right. for. I did not know what kind of a book to read. I didn't even know, uh, I wasn't familiar with spiritualism. I didn't, you know, it was all foreign to me. And so I went to Hartford mm -hmm. and I was walking down Asylum Street looking for a bookstore and I remember it was a bookstore I'd been there for ages, yeah. Whitcowers. <laughs> Never forget the name of that. I might forget your name, but I'll never forget <laughs> that. And so I went in there, and uh, there was, um, I'm going to have to spell it out here, there was two nuns in there and two or three priests, and they were browsing around. There was mm -hmm. not another soul in there except okay. myself and these five people. Mm -hmm. And this little man that was operating the place, working there, he kept... Um, he kept asking me, you know, if I if there's anything you can't find, maybe I'll, I'll, I can help you out. Right. And uh, these people finally left. They didn't buy anything, but they finally left. And um, this was, uh, I was too ashamed to tell him what I wanted, to tell you the truth. Hmm. I was just looking and looking and looking. Right. And then I said, he came over me finally, and he says, I'm sure there's something you're looking for here, and we probably have it. Mm -hmm. And he made a gesture like this towards the door. You know, he said, see the people that just left? Mm -hmm. I said, yes. He said, they're looking for certain books. And he says, if, they, if we have them out here where they can be seen, they'll buy them. But he says, 
they're, they're burned. Really? I said, why? He said, I don't want people to read this. And what you're talking about when you say this are books about mediumship. You got it. Really? You got it. So he said, come with me. Come with me. He took me by the arm and he led me behind a, a long counter over there. Mm. And he said, you're going to have to get on the floor. And down under this counter was all these books. Yeah. And I would say there could have been 10 or 12, 12, 10 or 12 feet long really? of all these books. And I got down there and I, I went all the way through every book. I wound up buying, and in those days, that was a lot of money. I bought $109 worth of books. Wow. And I've still got some of those in my office today. And he helped me out a great deal. And he said, the reason you see them here to here and not up there, he says, they would all be purchased and they would be burned. Wow. And he said, this is the only place that we can have these books so they're not destroyed. And you happening upon a person who would be sympathetic to that cause. Absolutely. It was very helpful for this you. This little short man. <laughs> and uh, he was Jewish. And... Uh, he helped me out a great deal. And this is your and beginning of the search for knowledge yeah. about what, what's going on with you. And I didn't have the money in my pocket, but I had a deposit for the people I was working with. And uh, so I borrowed $109 out of the deposit before I got it to the bank, paid for the books, and then I went and borrowed $109 from a friend of mine, put it in there and put it in the bank. There you go. But that's the way I got my books. And I couldn't stop reading them. I wanted more and more and more and more knowledge. And if people would really open their mind, mm. because I don't care who you are out there, one of these days you're going to die. You're going to go to another dimension that you've prepared. And if you're a bad person, you're going to go where all bad people go. Mark my word on that. If you're a good person, you're going to go where all good people go. If you're a musician, you're going to go where all musicians go. So somebody tuning in now would say, okay, so if you're a good person, you're going to go to heaven, and if you're a bad person, you're going to go where all the bad people go, which is hell. Heaven is a state of mind. I don't call it that. Okay. You continue living. Okay. Life is eternal. You're either living in a physical body, which I see in front of me, mm. or you're living in a spirit body. Okay. You see? And the spirit body is a body of energy. That's all there is to it. And the spirit people never look over 30 years old because there's something here in the soul I, I picture it like a camera mm. that takes, starts taking a picture of the time you're born all the way until you're about 27 to 30. It stops taking a picture, and that's what you look like on the other side. How nice that would be. You don't age <laughs> over there. You don't age. Mm. You stay over there approximately 70 years, and then after that point, you have a choice of coming back. And then if there's somebody in the family connected with you through the mm -hmm. so-called family tree and she gets pregnant the light field around her body changes from an off-white to a rose gold color and everybody in spirit has been taught that when this happens she's already conceived and if they choose you her as the vehicle then they lower their vibrations down seven levels mm -hmm. enter through her solar plexus here seats itself into the chest region of the little baby, mm -hmm. and that's the first time the baby starts kicking in the womb of the mother. And then if the, when the baby comes into the world, the baby has either taken, uh, taken up um, some of the genes from the family, mm -hmm. and in many cases, uh, the, uh, for instance, and years ago, years, years ago, mm -hmm. um, if a family, for instance, they had four children, and all the children looked like the mother and father. Mm -hmm. So she has a fifth child. Right. And the fifth one comes in, and the hair is blonde, and the eyes are blue, and the other kids are all dark hair. Right. Sometimes the husband kills her because he will not, he will not accept the fact that she didn't sleep with another man. Oh, my. It's simply because in the life before this, right. the, the, the person was blonde hair, mm -hmm. blue eyes, right. and the imprint is so strong in the soul, it comes back here in a new baby, right. that the hair is blonde and the eyes are blue. Isn't that something? It's the imprint. Right. So the imprint and the genes, sometimes this is why a person is different 
looking, but the other people of the family. And the child chose yeah. that parent. Yeah. You chose your parents, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. You chose your family. I don't know why. I, got, <laughs> I must have been out of my mind over there. That could be a lifelong question for many people, I think. <laughs> I must have been out of my mind or drunk or something over there to choose my family. Oh, Lord. Carl, what was your first reading like? What was your first experience with giving someone a reading, knowing that you could do that? Do you want to tell us about that? Well, the first reading, <laughs> you put me on the spot here. <laughs> The first reading that I ever did, uh, I was told <clears throat> I was told to go to Hartford. I got to Hartford. I was told to go out to Salem Avenue, and uh, a voice told me. In case you people wonder who was riding with me, well, uh, I was just hearing a voice, and so I went out Salem Avenue, and then when I got to this place where something was going on, it was raining that afternoon. It was in September also, and. Uh, there was a light appeared around the front of this building and it didn't have no steeple on it it was just a building and i parked the car and i went over there and i was very nervous opening that door and going in because i didn't know what was going on and i didn't like crowds mm -hmm. but i opened the door and right through the crowd a lady came over and took me by the hand dragged me over in the corner you might say and she whipped off her watch, put it in my hand, and she says, give me a, give me a reading. I says, oh, what? She says, give me a reading. You can do this. I says, I cannot. I, lady, I don't even know what you're talking about. I thought she was crazy. And you didn't know her from anybody? No, never okay. seen her before in okay. life. Okay. And here I am. I hadn't even, right. hadn't even hardly gotten the door <laughs> right through this crowd. And uh, it was two years, I think it was a couple of years after that, as she looked me up again, I was going to school now in, in Hartford, and she looked me up again and took me out to lunch, and when she told me what I told her mm -hmm. at that reading, I was so embarrassed because I said, I could never have told you anything like that, lady. Mm -hmm. She says, look, don't feel bad about it. She says, you told me all of this. It happened. I lived through it, and it's all behind me now, and uh, I'm not going into detail. <laughs> Okay. That was a little too heavy for yeah. me to handle. Yeah. But you didn't remember any of it. And that's, no. that's a, I guess, a telltale sign of when you go into trance. When you're in a trance state, you don't remember. Because it's, some people talk in their sleep. They don't remember. Mm. A person that's in a trance state, the body can man be manipulated by a spirit being. They can walk out there. They can even enjoy food mm. and things like that. Mm. I knew a medium... Uh, Esther, Esther, Esther Weeks, I believe her name was. I had her here, uh, I had her in Willimantic years ago. Okay. Poor thing, she was a beautiful person. And uh, she would, uh, when she was in trance, whoever it was that was taken over her body loved food. Oh God, she got so heavy really? in her later life. But she was a wonderful medium though. You could hear a pin drop if she's, if she's speaking. So, so the, the medium has to kind of go along with spirit. Yeah. <laughs> but Some of gotta, their characteristics. You've got to remember the priest who rewrote the Bible. Yeah. They'd always say that uh, this, this person was possessed by the devil, or this person right. was possessed by the devil, or these are devils, demons, and right. right. all of this. Right. You see. I've never really heard anything bad come of people who were genuine mediums. No. They've only ever tried to help people. They live a life of hell, let me tell you something. That's a shame. It certainly is. I, I, you have no idea what I've had to deal with. Right here. Right here. Hmm. Now, I know this is a tough one for a lot of people to uh, understand, never mind here, but you are communicating with Jesus on a regular basis. And I know you had said that years ago you had felt like undeserving and, and didn't understand why and you weren't sure, but this has now been proven. Yes, it has been proven because of the pictures. Mm. What, does, what does he think of people and religions? Oh, 
He has nothing to do with his religions, and I'm repeat. I'm saying that's what he said. Mm. I have nothing to do with religion because I said, why haven't you appeared to the Pope? Mm. Why don't you appear to somebody that's uh, mm. that's more knowledgeable than I am? Mm. A poor country boy like me uh, didn't even couldn't even finish school simply because I was being harassed and and everything else, and people wouldn't. Uh, you know the the picture they made of my life. Yeah. Well, the girl I was going with. I mean. Uh, they, when this family found out, they wouldn't even let me on their premises, not even walk across their lawn. That's how ignorant they are. And mm. where does that come from? Mm. It comes from theologians. Mm. all there is to it. I've noticed since doing this show that people who would have appeared to be friendly with you or an acquaintance of yours, um, have changed, have changed their energy a little bit. And now that what you, I hate to use the word, preach, you practice, it actually makes people uncomfortable. And I'm noticing that the people who um, may have claimed to be um, understanding and knowing of what you're doing, um, seem to shy, some shy away from it, and then some actually will gravitate more strongly towards you. Very it, much so. It, it, this whole process of doing the show seems to have been like a, almost a dividing line. Not that that was the intent of it. Well, there are, for instance, uh, there's one of the big religion in this country. I think it's the big religion. They tell the people not to read the Bible. Well, let me, let me, this goes to all the people watching this program. The reason they don't want you to read the Bible, because if you read the Bible, you're going to have a lot of questions because the Bible, as far as I'm concerned, is a history of psychic phenomena all the way through mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the greatest medium that has ever lived on this earth, and look what the priest did to him. Mm -hmm. He went through that horrible death, and after he had died and his spirit went on into the other dimension, he realized he had to have the body. He had to go back. Mm -hmm. He went back into the body, which the body was now in the tomb. He went back in it and he slowly speeded it up, speeded up the vibration of the body, brought it back to life and went right on until the body went into light. Hmm. That's what ascension is all about. You go from physical into light. And when he did that, it was that explosion. It took place inside of that tomb that ro moved that rock, that boulder that was there. That's what it was. And when the woke up the guards and all they saw was a bright light inside. They did not see a form, a human form. It's all there is to it. And look at all of these others. Moses was a medium. So was Elijah and Elisha and Hosea and God knows the whole book is full of them. Mm -hmm. And then these priests sat on their keister and rewrote everything. And there's a part in the Bible, in the Bible there where there was one of these uh, well, at one time, the Vatican had 1,000 1, slaves, 1,000 oh, slaves. really? And there was one of them there that was reminded me a little bit of Martin Luther, uh, the black guy. Okay. He met the head honcho coming down the hall, mm -hmm. and they were not supposed to speak to him. They were supposed to bow down and back out of the room or something like that. Right. But no, he asked him, he says, I'd like to ask you a question. Well, the Pope was kind of shocked that he would ask him a question. He says, but is it right, is it right for you to own us body, mind, and spirit? Hmm. Uh, this was the slave. Hmm. And, the, and he says, it is God's word. It's in the Bible. Hmm. Well, these, none of these slaves could read, not one of them. <laughs> and so... The head honcho went up to the guy that was writing a Le Leviticus, I believe it is, right. and he told him what the slave said, and the, the, the writer just inserted it, and that's why you get it. I think it's in Leviticus chap chapter 44, I think. Sid's the one that remembers all these things. And it says, Thy shall have a right to buy bondsmen and bondsmaids, and they were your property to do as you please with. And this is what caused slavery. It's all in the book. Now, there's a parallel there, too, whereby the people who enslaved these slaves didn't want them to be able to read 
That's right. So that they could gain more knowledge. That's right. Just like today, That's right. you're not encouraged to read the Bible because, heaven forbid, what would happen? You might think for yourself. The churches sold more slaves in this country than anybody else ever did. Oh, boy. And they hid that from the people. I'm sure they wouldn't like to hear that now at all. I don't care. You know what I find interesting? We have just a few minutes left in the show. Is that you have actually been able to learn how these things happen. Yeah. What goes on in the physical, yeah. in the non-physical world. Yeah. You've gotten answers to how mediumship uh, is. Yeah. And, and, and it would appear to me from other mediums that I have read about or seen that they simply know they do it, they know what they do, but they don't really understand the science of it or what's behind it. And I find it fascinating that this is what you are being able to learn about. Look at it this way. As we are on the planet right now, we're so used to communication through the telephone system, mm -hmm. radio system, mm -hmm. television system, Communicate right. with anybody in, on the planet. The world of spirit created this way of communicating with us using an instrument of the spirit. So I'm, I'm like an instrument of spirit. So was Jesus. So was all these other people, you see. And uh, <coughs> this is why they wanted us to write this book, My First Encounter with an Angel, and the entity that gave us the information would not reveal himself. He says, I will not allow anybody to create a religion in my name like so many others have done. For our viewers out there, this is the book. I don't know if we can get a close-up on this or not. Um, but it's titled, My First Encounter with an Angel, Revelations of Ancient Wisdom. And this is the first book that both uh, Sidney Schwartz and Reverend Carl Hewitt have co-authored. Uh, this book, which I have read inside and out, um, is an excellent resource and foundation to start with. Uh, as far as the knowledge that these gentlemen are sharing with the world. Um, there will be more books to come. There's another book coming out very shortly, and it's called Crossovers, and uh, it, it gives the answer as to why there are so many homosexuals on the planet, because any man that is a homosexual, his soul that's in that body is a female soul. And any woman that is attracted to another woman, it's because there is a male soul in her body. These are the crossovers. They cross over from one gender to the other. And this goes back to a religion going all the way back to Turkey. We had to go to Turkey to get the answers to this. So you're, you're not just sitting in your, uh, in your home giving readings, telling people things about them, and then that's the end of it. You're being asked to go on quests to find out the truth. Absolutely. And you're finding it. Absolutely. And it's going in these books, folks. If you are interested in a book, at the end of the show, there's a phone number you can call and an address that you can write to. Mr. Uh, excuse me, is on an honor system with the books. Call, ask for the book. You can send him the check later. And with that, I'd like to wrap up tonight's show. Thank you, Reverend Carl Hewitt. My pleasure. And thank you, viewers, for joining us. Tune in for future episodes of Making Known the Unknown. Be well. <laughs>